earlier this month, Fantasy Flight held an AMA, of course stands for Ask Me Anything, a Q&A with the public. They had their head of studio, Andrew Navarro, answering questions, later published some of the highlights on their own website. And we're here right now to discuss those questions and answers, what we gleaned from them, uh, and perhaps what maybe they say about uh, Fantasy Flight and other board game issues mm -hmm. at large. Now, a lot of these questions actually pertain to expansions because Fantasy Flight has a lot of big series that tend to just keep on going and going and growing. A bunch of them are going to be copyrighted products. The big one I think that came up a lot was Star Wars. And what was interesting about that was they mentioned how, oh, I think one from the Gleam from that was Star Wars Imperial Assault. They said, like, there's no expansion right now. It's a business reason we can't talk about. Mm -hmm. So I'm, I'm curious on your thoughts on that, but we'll go a little bit, we'll go back to that a little bit later. The other big one they talked about were their LCGs. Now, what's curious about that is they said their cooperative ones, mainly like Arkham Horror, uh, do very well with the rate that they usually release them in because it's sort of that they're constantly there, it's cooperative, you get what you want. But the competitive ones become a bigger issue, and they said how there's certain cards that either rarely or never cycle out. And they're a little bit unsure how to do that. Their big one right now, competitive-wise, is Game of Thrones. You know, there's only so much Game of Thrones out there. <laughs> uh -huh. So I think they're actually starting to hit that wall, they said, in terms of what content they can use. Mm, yeah, I, well, I, and I think uh, they also talked about Legend of the Five Rings and how they had tried a thing where they put out like six weekly packs right in a row. Mm -hmm. And at first people really liked it, but then people really didn't like it as much. And so trying to find that balance between how much is the right amount to release for people. Uh, and that also ties back they, to, to, to their other board games as well. You know, they said just for non-LCGs too, trying to figure out, they said they're now approaching games more as that they could have a beginning, a middle, and an end. Mm -hmm. And for some of their games, they've said like Descent, for example, or Imperial Assault, as you said, like we consider these games complete now and you can go out and buy these. Whereas I think before they maybe had a mentality of, Keep going we're, yeah, until... We're just going to keep making them. I think the word we? they use is until the horse runs out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, until that horse runs out of there. Uh, so uh, that's... Which, I I mean, I got to think that's... For most people, they would say, well, that's a good thing. I mean, you, I, I don't think anyone wants a company that... I mean, if, I guess if the content is all great and then you're and you like the game, then why shouldn't it come out forever? But I think usually you hit a point where it just becomes diminishing returns, or the quality goes down, or it's just too much to even keep up with. Um, they they did make an interesting point that I liked about comparing their games to uh, Euro games, for instance, about how unlike those style of games, when they release an expansion, it's usually just more narrative content. It, they, so they don't have the mm -hmm. concern of like, oh, we're making this too complicated or now it's ruining the spirit of the original game it's more just like here's more stuff to follow right which i think is a, a good point and makes sense but yeah i mean i'm, I'm happy that i like that they're acknowledging this and, the, and being relatively transparent about uh their their attitude about it and their philosophy going forward i mean are you uh like do you i don't know how do you feel about the rate of the way expansions come out for for their game any of their games are you happy with it I mean, the games that the big ones I play are the LCGs, mostly the cooperative ones. And my only issue with that is less. I think they probably release them at a good rate. It's just I can't get the people in the same room to play them. <laughs> Unfortunately, they can't give you an expansion for that. Yeah, they can't <laughs> fix that one. <laughs> but and I think that it, definitely for the cooperative games, because like Arkham Horror, if we're playing like. Who cares if there's a powerful card or something that was in a pack maybe I missed of? You know, you're just having fun going through the story. So it feels more like a new episode being added to it. So that way, the narrative, as you said earlier, that's what really the juicy part that you care about. There mm -hmm, is. Right. But like for something like the Game of Thrones or the Legend of the Five Rings, that I think more comparable to Magic. And what they do is they try to rotate sets out. So they're not even going to print this set anymore. Mm -hmm. But because of the way we think of board games and stuff, you're never going to be like, oh, they're not going to print that chapter pack anymore. Especially for something like Game of Thrones or let's take Star Wars or something. Like, how would you feel if you're like, oh, let's get the Star Wars game. Oh, the Luke Skywalker card's out of print. Yeah, that's pretty bad. <laughs> so it's a lot harder, with the, I think, to convince people to do that kind of, uh, of um, printing, uh, printing style. Mm -hmm. And now the rotating might be a little bit easier. 
and probably the best thing they can do. But I know some people will always get angry when their deck goes out of print or like, oh, well, no, then no one's going to buy those packs anymore if they rotate out. But then people also get angry if they don't print them anymore. So it become, they put themselves between a rock and a hard place there. Mm-hmm. So that's that, that's the big issue with the competitive uh, card scene, which is why I actually really loved when Andre never ended because I'm like, I have it all. <laughs> <laughs> so if we wanted to mess around, we have all the cards. Yeah, uh, let's. Uh, we're gonna make people mad by saying we loved when Android Netrunner died. <laughs> I love the world, and they did mention that they're looking on trying to bring him back. And the the I, board game, not Netrunner. Right, but Android. I think the world itself, and I love the world. Mm-hmm. I do want them to do more with the world. I want to make that very clear. <laughs> I think it like. Um, you know, Arkham Horror. It's not boxed in as much. I think, mm-hmm. even though Arkham Horror. Te- or, Lovecraft is a property because right. it's been in the um, copyright-free area. I forget what it's called mm-hmm. for so long. You sort of can just do what you want. Yeah, yeah. Well, it seems like going forward, they're still kind of for most of their LCGs just sticking to the one monthly release. For, it's, it's they from did, what I can tell. like say um, that uh, Game of Thrones is going to slow down to. Because of the mm-hmm. issues, and I think that uh, Lord of the Rings, they actually said it's going to take a break. Mm, okay, yeah, that, that that is interesting. But I know, I know for Marvel Champions, go, like which is a new one, they're just doing the one per month now. They even said like for game stores, it's hard to keep everything in stock. You know, all the uh, different codes they have to come up with. Yeah, I, yeah, and I mean, and for consumers too. I mean, yeah, it's, it's, it's anytime there's this much stuff to keep track of, it's hard for the publishers, the designers. Like, it's hard for everybody. So I really hope that they do they are going to really stick to this and be you know me very careful and think out what they're going to do and not just throw things at the wall and see what sticks and it sounds like that's what, what they want to do what are your actual thoughts though on even outside of fans it's ex- the way expansions are released in general because they're definitely one of the biggest ones because they have these huge lines but i could think of a couple other titles and stuff that had definitely have like a lot of expansions. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, like, I, I mean, obviously, if the if the content, if the quality is good, then theoretically, you know, there's why should you stop making it? You don't have no one's forcing you to buy it, right? No, that's true. Um, it's just I I find it interesting because I feel like we're definitely more beforehand. There's like I'm not counting like when there's Monopoly or Monopoly Clue, Monopoly like Fortnite <laughs> or something. Not Clue doesn't make sense. I realize this is. I bet there's years. a Monopoly Clue. <laughs> Probably, but like where they're, it's the same game, but just a different skin. Uh huh. But even like this, and video games have shown it more. It's a living game, you know, like Destiny. I mean, or, it's or, called or, living card yeah. game <laughs> in that sense. But like even, I don't, I don't think those are the only games that do that. Like Smash Up is very big. At least they do make a box to try to hold everything. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, for me personally, as a consumer, I feel like at a certain point, less is more, and I like that. I, I would like them to sometimes just say, like they said with Imperial Assault, it's done. <laughs> Here's everything. You can take what you want. Um, so I can't, it's a hard thing, because I can't fault the companies too much. Like, if they sell, they should make them, but there's definitely a point of where you risk fatigue also on the part of consumers where you can only take so many smash up expansions so many you know sentinels, sentinels of the multiverse they ended it um i think BattleCon has a ton of stuff like this final uh, expansion coming up i think they're closing that off as the well big issue though is all the ones you mentioned are original properties mm-hmm. How, what do you do though with star wars or like the power rangers that just started their kickstarter it never game, ends that's what you just, do <laughs> I, mean, I just find it very hard like in the marvel game like because and that's what I was joking about. Like everyone has their favorites, and they feel like they ha- that favorite deserves to be in the game because it is part of the franchise. Yeah, I mean, I think when it comes to something like that, you just gotta come to terms with the fact that if if you love some obscure character <laughs> from from you know one issue of Marvel, they're not gonna be in the game. I'm sorry. Uh, go play Legendary if you want that because they're probably in there. <laughs> but uh, when it comes to monthly releases, uh, yeah, probably they're just gonna do the big guns. Uh, and, and you know something like Star Wars, I think you have a little more wiggle room because they're uh, really is I, I well I think you have more wiggle room in terms of. There aren't as many core characters. Oh, okay. Marvel has literally hundred, like dozens of titles with giant. Right. Star Wars, there's like a dozen like big characters, and there's a lot of obscure characters. So you can please more people that way mm-hmm. in those areas. Um, and even Game of Thrones, I think, sort of the same thing a little bit. Well, that one they actually 
have used it. Right, <laughs> that's their problem. They went through as much as they possibly well, and could. Then, I'm curious on your thoughts on, like, I believe Lord of the Rings, mm -hmm. that they've actually made up a lot of characters. I think also partly because There's diversity not reasons, many. like, oh. you know, like... <laughs> I know in the course that we're like, who are these female characters? Because it's <laughs> right. like, there's like, what, two named ones in the actual books? Right, yeah, stuff like that is definitely... That's another interesting one, Journeys into Middle-Earth, that recently came out, because they also just put out a little... I don't know, if I, it was an interesting AMA. I think people should take a look at it. There are also some other stuff they talked about, too, like um, like you said, the thing about Imperial Assault. I don't know what those legal issues could possibly be. Or they said they might come out with... Uh, someone asked if they would come out with a Marvel board games, and the response was, it depends on what you consider a board game. <laughs> I thought that meant you were referring to the Mintra's game that they're working with someone else. I guess, but it seemed like very cryptic and a weird answer to give. Mm -hmm. um, you know, that's maybe that's why the Imperial Assault, they're making Marvel Assault. <laughs> yeah, maybe. I, yeah, I don't know. But So there's some cool tidbits in there. But yeah, in general, it sounds like they have a good path forward. And certainly I don't think they're going anywhere. I think Fantasy Flight, uh, I would consider them still pretty much the top of the heap in terms of uh, pu publishers for both you know name recognition and the brands that they have that have so much power. You mean Asmo Day? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, you know, it's, it's all relative. Um, yes, but uh, we'll see what they do. And of course, we also talked about recently AEG limiting their not expansions but new releases. So mm -hmm. it seems like in general, more companies are being more mindful in this world of how do we release things that are significant that don't get lost in the shuffle of the thousands right. of games every year. Um, talk to us in the comments. Let us know what you think about all of this. There's a lot to chew on. Uh, are you part of any Fantasy Flight's huge lines and do you have the entire collection or do you just pick and choose a couple either uh, LCG packs or maybe uh, Imperial Salt or X-Wing expansion? We didn't even touch on X-Wing. <laughs> yeah, that's a whole <laughs> other ball of wax. Uh, let us know. Uh, until next time, I'm Jonathan. I'm Will. This was Roll for Crit. Support our Patreon. Like this video and subscribe to our channel so you don't miss a thing. Watch more of our content now to hold back Cthulhu's madness.